woman. The name's She-Ra. A female He-Man. Oh, oh, this is the worst day of my life. Hi, He-Fans and She-Ravers. Welcome to another Super 7 Masters of the Universe retro style figure review. And we're taking a look at He-Man's twin sister today. It is the Princess of Power, She-Ra. And this is the figure that never was but should have been in the original lineup. And if you decide to pick one up for yourself after watching this review today, you can get it at Big Bad Toy Store. There is a link in the show notes below and it helps the channel out if you use that link. So there was a She-Ra figure released in the Princess of Power line and I had it a few years ago, got it for my wife who is a big She-Ra fan and she wasn't really feeling it and to be honest, I wasn't really feeling it either. When it comes to 80s toys, cartoons, comics, there is a synergy that I think is very important. And when you don't have synergy is when the toy doesn't look like the cartoon character or vice versa. And the He-Man toys were close enough to their incarnations in Filmation, but that original She-Ra figure looked nothing like the Filmation version. And when it's that different, it just feels like a totally different character. You don't get all of the character traits, uh, the charm, the wit. You just don't care. So I ended up selling that She-Ra figure because I wanted something like this. So I mentioned in the previous review that uh, this initial release of four figures uh, in this line of He-Man, She-Ra, Skeletor and Hordak and all of the subsequent releases as well look like figures that should have come out in the uh, final year or the following year of Masters of the Universe that never was and this to me is is great it looks fantastic once I open it up we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the actual quality and articulation and play value of it but in terms of looks, this looks amazing. It, it looks close enough to Tila and Evelyn um, that it's got that uh, remold, repaint, reuse of parts charm of the original He-Man figures. Uh, but it's original enough that it, it is definitely She-Ra. It's not like Faker. And just uh, 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 an observation about the card. The other cards, it's kind of weird. This one does not stand up on its own very well. Now, it does have a peg hole at the top if you so choose to pop that out and hang it on a peg or put it on a push pin on your wall. Then you can do that, but I know with a lot of collectors, this is a, a mark of mintiness, a mark of good condition, and a lot of people, collectors, just can't bring themselves to pop that out. So they get those clamshell cases, protective cases, which you can hang those up. But sometimes those cost more than the figure itself. And uh, so uh, another nice option is when you're able to actually stand these figures up on a shelf. And you, for some reason, can't really do that with this She-Ra. You have to use something like a, you know, like a bottle cap or something to prop her up. And just uh, a little observation I've made with the other releases in this line, the male figures, you can. They lean forward a little bit, but Hordak, Skeletor, He-Man, they're all really sturdy. So you can actually, if you have a shelf on your wall, you can just sit them on the shelf if you don't want to uh, hang them on pegs. But She-Ra, if you are planning on doing that, you're gonna actually have to stick a little something under there to, to prop her up. And what makes this release even more special is that it is on the original style Masters of the Universe card. So happy that the toy companies are going back to the original retro style of packaging, that they're realizing that it's not just about the vintage style of figure, but it's also the vintage artwork. Now this might not look like a lot of artwork, it's not like Transformers or G.I. Joe that had actual individual artwork, but this is still artwork. This logo, this these exploding rocks. Uh, it's very nostalgic for longtime collectors. So having a She-Ra, not on a... I'm glad they didn't redo the Princess of Power style of card. They actually went with the classic Masters of the Universe style of card. And that just feels like 
one of those 30 year itches that you finally get to scratch. And we finally got a Shira figure on the retro vintage style card because even though she had her own unique branding of Shira, Princess of Power, she is part of the Masters of the Universe universe, I guess, to reuse the term. And it just it seems more fitting that she's on a Masters of, of the Universe card now. Once you open it up, it also includes what in the package looks like a mini comic, but actually is uh, an art card. And on the front we have Shira transforming with the crystal castle behind her and on the back from toy to tune and we can get a, a look at that original she-ra toy which just does not really look like the tune version of she-ra that lou Scheimer and his friends brought to life on the animated series so i don't know maybe you can sort of see how that was derived the headdress was derived from that but it's just too different for my taste but it's a it's a really nice art card i guess you call it it's a nice texture it reminds me of those beautiful dvd sets that came out a while back the ones that unfold flip open that i featured in the history of masters of the universe 1983 episode just recently it's like a glossy matte shiny slick matte finish it's really nice it's not doesn't feel like cheap crappy paper so it's actually really nice little thing to maybe stick behind your figure uh, and display but taking a look at the figure itself and uh, right off the bat the thing that I noticed was that it doesn't stand all that well depending on how you pose the uh, the arm so I guess in keeping with the other female figures um, it helps if you keep the arms down as soon as you raise the arms up she becomes a little bit front heavy so you're going to want to get some of those uh, stands she grips the sword fairly well and just to take a quick look at her accessories she does include three accessories so the first one is the sword of protection and the nice thing about this one is it's very similar to he-man's but it has the blue gem and it's just a paint application it's not an actual uh, gem like they've done for some of the classics figures or the 2000x figures uh, that is definitely shiro's sword and then there is a second version of it without the, the blue gem. So it's just a smaller version of He-Man's sword. And to give you a size comparison, this is Shira's sword and this is He-Man's sword. So they are actually very, very close in size. You can see that they are just about the same length. Shiraz is just slightly more narrow and she also includes her shield which I don't know if you want to be really accurate um, she can't have them both because the sword actually transforms into the shield right so sword to shield and I guess that's a positive if you, if you lose both of these swords then she's still fairly complete I guess <laughs> but uh, I think it's it's fine to just uh, display her with both of them uh, I definitely prefer the sword with a gem in it because that to me is definitely Shira. I'm all for extra accessories as long as it doesn't really drive the price up a lot but to me this isn't a Shira sword this is a he-man sword but this is the sword that most people will be using with their Shira figure and it's got that same little uh, bracer loop thing which her hands are so small it doesn't actually touch um, I guess you could spin it all the way back and it kind of braces against her wrist which makes it sturdier so it's it's something um, without it she still holds it pretty well but it's just nice that you can spin it that way 
and uh, get it a little sturdier. She's got a cloth cape, which is awesome. Not too many Masters of the Universe vintage figures had actual soft goods, it's called. So this cape feels a little short. I think it actually came down lower than that on the cartoon. And the easiest way to check is just the evidence is right there. So yeah, it goes lower than her skirt. So well, I don't know what the deal is there. Just decided to cut the cape short would have looked better uh, if it was a little longer in my opinion. But it's cool that it's actual soft goods like Prince Adam's uh, vest. And uh, let's see, gold boots. Nice paint job on the gold boots. And it's nice that it's an actual original torso instead of Tila's torso repainted again. It is Tila's... Um, actually, no, it is not. It's similar, but Tila has bracers on her arms. Um, it's very similar, so again, it kind of looks like it's a remold of Tila, but it is not. And uh, she's got the white skirt as well. For articulation, her head moves. I'm, I'm trying to be <laughs> careful with um, where I grab her out of respect for Lou Scheimer and all of the respect he always showed with how <laughs> Shira was portrayed in the show. Um, so her head does turn left and right, but same problem as the classics figures. This hair is a big solid piece. It's not um, like Barbie hair which the original She-Ra had and the 2000X She-Ra exclusive had. So she gets in her own way here. It limits her poseability, which is fine. I would much rather have this hair than this hair. The actual real lifelike hair style that they use for the 2000X She-Ra. Arms move up and down and she's got great range. It stops when she hits her own hair, but you can move it out of the way a little bit so that she can actually do a full 360. Uh, great range on the other arm as well. And again, sort of gets in her own way there. And I wonder if she has the waist. Yes, she does have the waist spring. And, oh, that's really powerful. She just threw her, just threw her sword away. I'll just take these accessories off while we're doing this. So, she does actually have a really good, strong spring that feels really strong, like uh, like the He-Man figure. So you can really wallop a uh, Hordak and the Horde with this figure. And a little Captain Kirk karate chop action there for <laughs> Mantena. And she's got similar leg articulation to He-Man. The old figures couldn't do this. The new ones can, though. They can uh, almost, this one can almost go 360. This feels really loose and uh, I'm not going to try to force that because there are a lot of accounts of people saying these are breaking off. I love the design of them, the new legs, uh, not doing the old rubber style, but um, if it's going to be that fragile and break, then there's no point and it's, it's unrepairable once it breaks. But for the purpose of just standing there being on display. Like, I don't know if these Super 7 E-Man figures are, are for kids. I think if you smash them around like the originals, they're going to break very quickly. I think they're just mostly meant as adult collectibles to look nice on a shelf, to fill out spots that look like they've been empty for a long time. Like I, I think she looks fantastic next to the other Masters of the Universe. And for a couple of comparisons, here she is with a couple of other female Masters of the Universe, Tila and Evelyn. And even though she has mostly original parts, I, I do like that they have tried to make it look like she's still somewhat derived from the other female Masters of the Universe. Because when She-Ra first showed up, to me she was just kind of the the next stage, next evolution of Tila. She kind of swooped in and stole 
Tila's Thunder, kind of like Rodimus Prime stealing Prime's Thunder, but I do uh, I do like that it looks like she's derived from there, and we take the shield off. Um, the hand, even though it's also an original mold, it has the same charming... I always thought this looked like the, the girl was offering her hand for someone to kiss it, you know, like when a queen offers her hand for someone to kiss it. So I think it's cool that they gave She-Ra the exact same hand position as Evelyn and Tila. And the bracelet, actually, it's new, but it, it's sort of in the same shape. It's got different uh, design on it because Evil Lynn and Tila have this um, swirly design, whereas Shira has this um, kind of bumpy style of detailing on her bracelets. And here she is with her brother, Prince Adam, and also with her brother in a different form, E-Man, who had a little trouble standing. And I really like that she looks like a, a midway point. She doesn't look like a total filmation version of the character. She kind of looks like half the old original Masters of the Universe style and half the new filmation version so not a complete tune look to me and, and i think she fits in quite nicely with the uh, original masters of the universe and here's what i mean about a halfway point so it's like this figure the shira figure has one foot in the vintage line and one foot in the filmation line uh, talking about a figure that has both feet in the animated filmation line, it's this guy. Uh, compared to this Shira, this He-Man totally looks like just a filmation uh, version of the character. So I actually prefer this. It kind of looks more vintage with a with a little bit of the uh, the cartoon version of it. But in, I think the gold helps a lot. If they wanted to go total tune look, they would have went with yellow instead. And I'm glad that they actually went with metallic gold on her headdress, which I haven't given, given you a close-up of. Nice detailing in the headdress. The red ruby on the top. Really nice eye paint job on here. Uh, blue eyes. And sometimes these new figures are notorious for wonky eyes, eyebrows that are nowhere near where they're supposed to be but uh, everything is perfect on this one I guess she's got lipstick too I guess but uh, I got uh, fortunate in the paint applications on this one and she also doesn't seem to be as shiny as this he-man this guy is really shiny really sweaty um, looking whereas this she-ra she's Got a little bit of a glistening going on. She doesn't look completely drenched, like she just came out of the pool. And an example of another totally cartoon looking toy uh, figure is the original vintage Orko, which even though it's a vintage figure from uh, the original line, it totally looks uh, like it was 100% filmation, not kind of 50-50. Here's the retro Shira figure alongside the original Hordak. And again, that looks really cool. As someone who grew up on the original line, and they did Hordak right in the old days, but you just couldn't put that vintage Shira figure next to the Horde figures. They just they didn't go well together. And now they finally do. And the final comparisons are with a couple of other She-Ra figures. Here's the 2000X She-Ra exclusive figure and a Masters of the Universe Classics She-Ra figure, sort of. It's been customized. I actually put together a uh, bubble power She-Ra figure with the original Classics version of She-Ra. So those are the three 
more recent Shira figures that have been released. And I really like uh, I really like this one. So it's very cool that the Princess of Power, He-Man's twin sister, is finally getting a little bit more attention. There's a new series currently on Netflix. And with a new He-Man movie in the works, one can only hope that uh, there will be some involvement with She-Ra in that too. And I'm personally hoping for uh, a He-Man introduction story. Get a couple of stories on Eternia out, and then just like they did in the old days, how about um, traveling over to Etheria and then having the adventures of She-Ra against the evil horde on there. Formula worked before, and I think it should be followed again by Mattel and whoever's making the movies. Fantastic plastic tribute to a fantastic character. I used to call She-Ra a strong female character. Now I just call her a strong character. I, uh, I'm really inspired by She-Ra. I think she's a fantastic character that empowers not just girls, but boys as well. And I would hope that uh, people who are uh, quite motivated about empowering girls will also remember that boys need to be empowered and inspired as well. So I think He-Man and She-Ra are wonderful characters to inspire everybody regardless of their gender. I want to give a shout out to Sean Fuster on the Patreon tribe who's also a big She-Ra fan. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to leave a comment or a Shira memory in the comments. Scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Do your thing, good sister. For the